this week on the show, we have transformational coach Jennifer Perry, who is the founder and CEO of the Shiro Life and Empowerment Coaching. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of having a zest for life. Essentially, having a zest for life means you are passionate and excited about life. It means that you don't take your time for granted and see life as a privilege to be able to experience all the wondrous opportunities life has to offer. The reality is when we lose our zest for life, we start to see life with a different lens, a lens filled with lack, unappreciation, and boredom. The happiest people in the world are the people who have a zest for life and see each day as an opportunity to grow, evolve, learn, and live life to the fullest. This is why it's so essential to make time each and every day to do things that you enjoy, whether that's cooking, spending time with your family, traveling, or whatever it is that brings you joy and happiness into your life. Having a zest for life simply requires changing your perspective from seeing life as a gift rather than taking it for granted. Remember, it's experiences, not things, that bring zest and happiness into our lives. As the saying goes, when we get excited about life, we get a life that is exciting. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And what I love about your story is that you turned your wounds into power and you're empowering other women through your experience. So tell us about the Shiro coaching program and a little bit about the work you do. Sure. So. Uh, right around COVID, when COVID hit, um, I really made the decision to go into coaching full time. Uh, my clients weren't calling me saying, hey, what's going on with my money? They were calling me because life was happening and there was a lot of things that they didn't understand. And uh, I decided at that point in time to really specialize in the areas that my clients were coming to me for help in. And 99% of my clients are women. They're transitioning out of divorce or abuse or losing a spouse and they're really trying to get their footing again financially and um, so when I, I uh, saw the need that wasn't just financial it went into life and how to def you know deal with certain things I then became very focused on doing mindset work and doing empowerment work and confidence so through that Shiro was born. Next up on the show we have Jennifer Perry who is the founder and CEO of the Shiro Life and Empowerment Coaching. Jennifer is a transformational coach and through her company Shiro helps women become financially fearless, embrace their inner worth and create the life of their dreams. Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being here. I'm excited to talk to you. You have a very inspirational story. As a transformational coach, you help thousands of women reclaim their lives. But I know that you had your own struggle and challenges that helped you find your strength. One of those challenges was your parents' divorce when you were in high school. So tell us about that time in your life and how you found your inner strength. Well, you know, as you're growing up, it's this very protective bubble that you're in, right? And then real life happens. I grew up in a really small town in Eddystone, Pennsylvania, right outside of Philadelphia. Had a lot of friends, everybody knew everyone. Um, so when uh, I knew that there was stuff that was going on with my parents, my mom did a really good job of hiding a lot of things and, and focusing on my brother and myself. But during my senior year of high school, you know, she had had enough and uh, it was a decision that she had to make and uh, it was a hard one for her, but uh, it was my first real taste of, you know, I guess the real world because um, you, you, like, you have this certain environment that you live in and then all of a sudden it starts to kind of fall apart. So that was really hard for me, but at the same time, senior year of school, right? I was really focused on me uh, being a little selfish. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was really a, um, the first case that I had that there is a world outside of these walls and it's not always perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people can relate to that. And you also went through an abusive marriage. So how did you navigate through that experience? So, you know, my parents went through a divorce and I got through my senior year of high school. And I think I was going through a very rebellious stage. You know, I thought well, everybody else should be just as involved in me as as I was mm -hmm. and I got involved with somebody that I was warned not to get involved with and um, spent a decade of my life really fighting for my life. Uh, it started off with little things here and there um, and uh, really escalated into something that 
was now looking back on it was something that should have been in the movies, right? Um, yeah. And it was it was something really hard to navigate. But at that time, uh, I had two small children, and you were just in survival mode. Yeah. So I wasn't allowed to communicate with family. I wasn't allowed to work outside the home. I wasn't allowed to essentially do anything. And it was a very um, a very scary period of of my life, and also definitely something that shaped uh, the way that I help women now. Mm -hmm. And two years after that, I know you faced a serious medical condition as well. Uh, what did you learn through that period of your life? Well, um, in 2021, I was 50 years old and uh, getting ready for Christmas, woke up not feeling well. And within, uh, you know, I guess three days, I was in intensive care, mm -hmm. paralyzed from the mm -hmm. shoulders down, uh, diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome. And um, we didn't know what the prognosis was going to be. Most people, it's a very rare neurological um, reaction. And a lot of people use their, lose their ability to breathe. So uh, eventually it did go into my face. So I was essentially paralyzed from head to toe. And when you're laying in there and you have no ability to do anything, you really evaluate your life, right? And you, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I've been, through, <laughs> I've been through so much in my life. Why now? Why mm -hmm. this again? You know, there's only one person can take so much. But I think it was because uh, what I've learned more than anything out of it is that I was given this, I don't know, this, this, this variety of things in my life to m get through them and to transform my own life to help other people move those mountains in their lives. And as I started to get better, I mean, I'm not 100% now, but I learned how to walk again, oh. feed myself, do my hair, do all the normal things at 50 years old. And uh, it really taught me that there were, you know, you slow down in life. There's a lot of people that are going through a lot of things. And um, sometimes they don't have the right support system in place. They certainly don't have the right mindset. And what uh, when I came out on the other side of that, I was like, you know what? You spent 20 years teaching people how to financially transform their lives. You're gonna spend the rest of your life really helping people transform every aspect of their life, move the mountains out of the way, help them believe in themselves. And um, that's probably the biggest lesson that I learned going through that. Mm -hmm. And what I love about your story is that you turned your wounds into power and you're empowering other women through your experience. So tell us about the Shiro coaching program and a little bit about the work you do. Sure. So uh, right around COVID, when COVID hit, um, I really made the decision to go into coaching full time. Uh, my clients weren't calling me saying, hey, what's going on with my money? They were calling me because life was happening and there was a lot of things that they didn't understand. And uh, I decided at that point in time to really specialize in the areas that my clients were coming to me for help in. And 99% of my clients are women. They're transitioning out of divorce or abuse or you know, losing a spouse and they're really trying to get their footing again financially. And um, so when I, I uh, saw the need that wasn't just financial, it went into life and how to def you know deal with certain things. I then became very focused on doing mindset work and doing empowerment work and confidence. So through that, Shiro was born. Um, I am a huge Wonder Woman fan, I have been. I believe that all women have a superhero deep inside that uh, has unique skills and abilities that are our superpowers. So uh, when I launched Shiro, um, I had looked back on my career and how I had helped people transform different aspects of their life. And I decided to put together a program uh, that I could reach more women on uh, you know, a bigger scale. And that's how the Empowerment Blueprint came out. And uh, the Empowerment Blueprint has the CAPE method is my proven method. Um, staying in the whole theme of, of obviously superhero, uh, but we, te we te teach women how to really gain confidence and clarity in their life, live authentic and aligned with what it is that they want to do, find their passion in their purpose, and then empower them to go out and really execute um, and embrace a life that was meant for them. So that's a little bit about what I do in, in that space, and we're now you know expanding that globally so that women that are all across the world know that uh, no matter what they're facing, they certainly don't have to go through it by themselves. Yeah, I love that your programs are geared toward women because I feel that women are the most vulnerable. You know, we have children, we get married, we and we're more sensitive, right? So I feel like I, I love that your coaching program is specifically helping women because I think that we need it the most, right? <laughs> so 
I think I love that. Um, one of the mottos of your company is be the shiro of your life. So tell us about that motto. Sure. So, you know, going through life, we're going to have a lot of people that come in and they try to tell us what to do, where we should work, how many kids we should have, where we should live. Um, and it's very easy to kind of give that pen of your story to someone else. And um, while we go through life, you're going to have a lot of different characters that come in and out, a lot of different chapters of your life. But your story is your story to write. You are the you are the main character in it. And, um, you know, it's nice to have people that are surrounding you there to support you, but they don't get to write your story. You get to write it. So I teach all of the women that come through um, Shiro coaching that this is your story and it's yours to tell um, and it's just yours to own. And there's so many women who look back and they say, well, I made this mistake or I had this bad relationship or I didn't make a lot of really good decisions and they stay there. Yeah. And I try to get them to move forward and like those were just stepping stones. We're at, you know, you don't like that chapter of your book, open up a new page, uh, but never give that pen to someone else. It's your story to write. Mm -hmm. And tell us how your program, The Empowerment Blueprint, helps women be become empowered and really uh, change their mindset. So what we do, a lot of the things inside the course is we give them clarity on where they want to be in their life, where they're at right now. We talk about limiting beliefs that they may have, ones that they may have been instilled when they were much younger, mom and dad had beliefs about something. So you absorb that. You're like a sponge when you're a kid and you absorb all that. So there are a lot of beliefs that we have as adults that were never really ours. They came from someone else. So we, we kind of work through um, having a clear vision of what it is that they want and then understanding what their beliefs are and if they are limiting them from ultimately being successful. And then we take them through understanding how to be authentic. There's a lot of imposter syndrome that goes on out there. There are a lot of people that are hiding behind masks because they don't really want to show who they are. And we teach women to be specific about their life and to be authentic and aligned with their values. And then there are a lot of people, I was 48 years old before I really started doing in my career what truly fulfilled me. And there are a lot of women that I work with who are, they don't really know what they were called to do. So we help them uncover what that passion is, find out where their genius zone is, find out what their purpose is, and then have them have a strong understanding of this is what you're meant to do. And then we teach them through the course of the program to be financially empowered, understand what it means. It's okay to be a millionaire. It's okay to be successful. It's great to have an abundant mindset. So many women are, are stuck living in a scarcity mindset. So we, we kind of, it's kind of like retraining, you know, I, I say I train, I train sheroes, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a retraining of what we have to get our, our mind in place, our, our uh, values aligned to really go out and make a difference. I don't want somebody to be on their deathbed looking back and saying, oh my gosh, if I only if, I want them to not spend 30 years like I did trying to sort it out. I've given them a blueprint. This yeah. is what I have followed. This is the track that I have followed and now I'm making it available to you. And not only is it available to you, but I'm gonna be there every step of the way to help you through it. Mm -hmm. I like that you said that it's okay to, you know, want more money, to want abundance because it's our birthright, right? A lot of people think that we're not worthy of these things, but to be honest, that's where we're, we've been put on this earth to live an abundant life, right? And the only thing that separates us from having it is our mindset of, of scarcity <laughs> and fear because sometimes we fear our own greatness. So I love that you're le letting women step into that greatness and really reclaim their lives. I think that's beautiful. For anyone watching this, for any women watching this that really resonate with what you're saying, but maybe they're afraid to get that help because I feel like asking for help sometimes is very vulnerable. So what would you mm -hmm. say for someone watching that is going through maybe a divorce, maybe is not financially stable, maybe they just don't feel worthy. What would you say to, to reach out and, you know, get help? First of all, you are worthy. There is no question you are worthy. Um, second of all, I would just tell them like, you know, it, being asking for help is actually one of the strongest things you can do. I yeah. learned that myself when I had no choice but to ask for help, right? We always struggle with asking for help as being a weakness. It's not. It's actually a sign of incredible strength. So putting your hand up and saying, you know what? I don't get this. I don't know where I'm heading. I really need somebody to just come alongside. Um, I am in no judgment zone. 
Uh, I have been through so much in my life that there is not one thing a client has ever shared with me that I have not been able to have a connection on. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just finding the right people. It's finding your tribe. It's finding people who can be there to support you and who have had that life experience. It's like getting parenting experience, uh, advice from somebody who's not had any children. Yeah. You want to work with somebody who has actually not only transformed her own life, her own finances and is actually living in the life that she's always dreamed of. You want to find that and you want to kind of link arms with somebody who is going to be there to move you forward at your pace, but we're going to keep moving forward. So mm -hmm. I would say putting your hand up and, and stepping into your power is literally one of the strongest things that you can ever do. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And Jennifer, you have many accolades. You're a best-selling author. Uh, you've won multiple awards. I know you have a new book out called Never Give Up. So tell us about the book. So the book, uh, I had a pleasure of doing the book with Dick Vitale, an iconic legend, uh, with and also a bunch of thought leaders from across the, the globe. And it really is just our own personal experiences of being successful, pushing through the limits, pushing you know the resilience and the grit and the determination to move forward um, and never give up. And I just uh, started, I'm doing a book with Lisa Nichols too. I was just on her, her show Breakthrough. And um, our book together is called Rise Up. So never give up and rise up. And you'll be hearing more about that in the new year as that book comes out. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer, I think that so many women can relate to you because you're not just someone that's giving advice. You're someone that's actually been through it yourself. So you really understand what these women are going through. You have hundreds of testimonials on your website of, of women saying how much you've helped them and really become empowered. So what does it mean for you as a coach to have used your own experiences to help empower other women and to see that? You know, every time somebody sends me a testimonial, it just, it like, it kind of humbles me and it warms my heart because when you look back at the life experiences that I've had, you know, I've not always made good decisions, right? We, we go through things in life and we make mistakes or we go down dead end roads. But when somebody says that I've helped them transform their life, then I look at everything that I went through now has being used for good. It's being used to help women get out of an abusive situation that I didn't have the strength to do right away. It's there for me to allow, you know, allow me to pour myself in the lives of somebody else while they sort it out. I have so many women that come to me and they say, you know, I don't believe in myself. I don't think I can do it. And there's a period of time where they have to borrow my belief in them that they can do it. Mm -hmm. And I recently had a client call me and I was on vacation and she took me by surprise and she said, I'm just calling you to give you back your belief in me because I got it now. And that is just like so for me, it's so life changing because I don't want people to waste time. I should not have been here on so many occasions, on so many reasons. I, I you know, I could have been taken off this earth, but obviously I'm here for a reason. Yeah. And I'm going to continue to do that, to, to use what I've been through to help other women get unstuck. So when they talk about how much I've transformed their life, it really means the world to me. That's amazing. And, you know, Jennifer, I created this platform to inspire, to uplift and to really be a beacon of light for anyone watching that needs that boost of inspiration because we need more inspiration out there. Right. We need people like you inspiring. So for anyone watching that is, you know, going into 2024 with limiting beliefs, maybe they don't feel good enough. Maybe they just they don't feel deserving of greatness or, or success. What would you say to inspire and uplift them? I would just tell them to find find that one person, whether it's me or not, you know, and in some cases it may just be looking in the mirror and saying, you know what, this is going to be my year. This is going to be my year where I get out of this relationship and I take care of me. This is going to be my year where I go out and I start that business that I've always wanted to start, or this is going to be the year where I lose weight or I get my financial house in order. Um, no matter what it is that you choose to do, just pick something and just take that one step forward. And it's not where you have to get it all done in a certain period of time. I'm not somebody who sets resolutions. I set intentions and I set goals. And I encourage my clients to do that. Just set intentions for what you want in your life and take that one step forward. And if there's anything that I can do to just get you unstuck, well, now you know where to find me. Mm -hmm. And speaking about finding you, for our viewers that want to learn more about your story or get some coaching from you, where can they do so? You can go to my website, just my name, jenniferperry.com. 
If you want to know more about the Empowerment Blueprint and how to get enrolled in that, just go to capeupshiro.com. And that's how you can find a, find out how to get involved. Perfect. We're going to link that information below so our viewers can get in touch with you. Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the show today. Happy New Year and congratulations on everything that you're doing because your work is much needed in the world and you really are transforming lives. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much for having me. Tax TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch live through YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm.